Hello everyone, my name is Venkatesh Pingi. In this video, I will be discussing about deep neural decision forests. The authors of this paper are Peter, Madalena, Antonio and Samuel. Let's go into the presentation. Here is the agenda for this presentation. I will explain each one of these one by one. Unfortunately, there is a bit of math involved. I will try the best of my abilities to make it simpler for you to understand. Let's start by breaking down the title. What is random forest or a decision forest? It is a multitude of interconnected decision trees, each of which is going to make a prediction for the given sample input. And in the end, all of those predictions will be averaged to get random forest prediction. Now I mentioned a decision tree. Let's see how an individual tree in this forest looks like. This is the simplest, very basic representation of a decision tree. What are we go what we are going to see in this video is a little more complex than this. Let's see what's good about this random forest. Now I listed a bunch of good things about this random forest. I won't go through all of those. So in a simple sense, random forest uses a divide and conquer policy and a very user friendly model that has a very high performance. Let's move on to deep neural networks. What is it? It is this layers of nodes connected to all the previous and following layers. In this, we have an input, an output and three hidden layers. The hidden layer sees something like uh, edges, combination of edges, object models, etc. The good thing about deep neural network is it has this ability of uh, representation learning. And with enough power and data, they outperform any conventional model. Now let's talk about the main man of the presentation, deep neural decision forest. And it looks like this. It is actually a combination of both things that we discussed above. So what are authors trying to achieve by combining these two things? Let's get into this. They're taking the representation learning from deep neural network and divide and conquer technique from decision forest and introducing a back propagation compatible version of decision trees. By doing this, they should be able to reduce the uncertainty of uh, routing decision of a sample taken at an internal node. Let's dive into the main problem. How do you stochastically route a sample at each node of a decision tree? Assume you have a classification problem and obviously we are going to solve this using decision trees. Now decision tree has two types of nodes. All the nodes in the red colored boxes are called decision nodes or internal nodes. All the nodes in the green colored boxes are called prediction nodes or the leaf nodes. And this is where the math starts, so bear with me. Instead of normal node, at every decision node, we implement a decision function dn of theta function that takes x a sample and gives output either 0 or 1. Once a sample reaches a leaf node L, there we have a class, uh, there we have a class label distribution pi L for tree prediction. So with all this, we can write final prediction for sample X like this, in this equation one. On the right hand side, we can see pi L Y, which represents the probability of a sample reaching leaf L to be predicted as class Y and mu of X denotes the probability of sample X reaching leaf L. Now we can define this routing function mu L as something like this where on the right side we have L left arrow N, L right arrow N. Well, these activate the particular decision function values depending upon which side we go. L left n is true when L belongs to left subtree of node n and similarly L right n. For internal nodes, one of these variables will be true. 
but for prediction nodes both of these will be false because there is no left or right subtree at leaf nodes if you are having a little bit of trouble just like me when i first read it here is a visual example now we have dn functions at all internal nodes which is a routing function that says whether to go left or right now this black part shows about uh, for a random sample x and the path it went now with this example we can say mu l x is equal to d1 of x because it went left multiplied by 1 minus d2 of x because it went right and then multiplied by 1 minus d5 of x because it went right again as of now we are dealing with one decision tree a bunch of decision trees combined becomes a decision forest just as i explained before we average the output of all trees to get the forest uh, the forest prediction now let's see how we can introduce back propagation into learning trees we need to optimize two things number one decision nodes parameterizations theta number two leaf node predictions pi and we do that with respect to a subset of data set called t with all those things combined we create a new variable called risk factor from the weak equation we can say it's the sum over l where l is the log loss of a single example as you can infer from this information it's a two step strategy we can change the updates to theta with respect to the updates to pi to minimize the risk term learning decision node in other words minimizing theta for this we'll employ a stochastic gradient descent approach to minimize the risk with respect to theta which is represented in this equation oh this beta here is a mini batch which is taken from data set t we can decompose the derivative log loss like this in this equation 8 to smooth out the calculation now let's minimize pi so from previous slide we have a fixed theta with that in mind we'll try to minimize risk factor with respect to pi in order to do that we'll follow the iterative scheme mentioned here the base case or starting point can be anything as long as all elements are positive now we learned a tree let's learn a forest since just just collection of trees we can assume that they all share same parameters in theta but they have independent leaf predictions pi to calculate theta we randomly select a tree in each mini batch and then proceed for sgd update mentioned before this idea is very similar to dropout in deep neural networks now dropout is a neural network uh, dropout in a neural network is is a method of randomly selecting bunch of internal uh, hidden layer nodes and turning them off doing this would help the learning process and it would avoid the possibility of overfitting now putting all of what we discussed into a single pseudo code we get this we have a training set and number of epochs we randomly initialize theta and we iterate over we iteratively compute pi and then break t into random mini batches and for every mini batch we update theta using sgd we do this for n epochs and after doing all this this is our how this is how our final product looks like a beauty i would say deep cnn on top fully connected layer in the middle giving out functions to all internal nodes in the decision trees below making it easier routes for samples to reach leaf nodes where output will be distributed over all class labels it's a very elegant way of uh, designing it now to evaluate the model the authors conducted experiments they test in both shallow and deep neural forest deep neural decision forest they evaluate from simple binary classification to large scale image recognition so in this first test 
we evaluate shallow deep neural forest against alternating decision forest with respect to G50C, Letter, USPS, MNIST, CAR 74K datasets. As you can see in the middle, SDNF is much more better than ADF in three of the datasets. Now, for deep neural network decision forest, they chose MNIST dataset and a LeNet 5 as a baseline for simple classification. They replaced the softmax layer, softmax layer of Linet 5 with the decision forest that we discussed in this paper. While the baseline gives a error of 0.9% on test data, with our modified model that is reduced by 0.2%, making it 0.7% classification error, which is very hard to achieve at that uh, at that area of accuracy. After that, they ran it for a large scale image recognition with Google Net and Google Net Star, which is a modified version of Google Net as baselines and DNDF.net. And as you can see, DNDF has bested the previous result by almost 0.3%. Now I almost uh, bored you with so many numbers and math equations. So I would, I would com conclude this. I would say we introduced back propagation compatible decision trees and successfully validated new model our new model and surpassed the state of art performance on ImageNet. And I went uh, in depth with the points I mentioned there. With that, I will end this video. Thank you very much for everyone who made it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you.